I have notes on the entire DSP interview that happened yesterday. Uh, this has been, th this was the secret thing that I mentioned. Um, this was requested of me. However, oh no, oh no, there's no summary post about the DSP interview. How could Josh possibly cover the DSP interview and take some timestamps to discuss it? If there's no summary to spoon feed him. Well, my easy. I have some good news. I actually watched a five hour long DSP interview from 8 a.m. to like noon. Even on 2x, they kept pausing to do other stuff and get up and take care of shit, right? <clears throat> but I actually, I didn't, I put in the work. I put in the work. I watched the interview. I took some notes. And, um,. Let me see what I have written down, because this was the first thing that I did today, so it's not the freshest in my mind. It, it, it is essentially <clears throat> a, a interrogation. You have two guys. One's named Craig. The other is named Adam. Um, I believe that the guy named Adam is Adam Krieger, and I believe Adam used to be a co-host for the Tim Pool show. I don't know anything about him. However, I'm really soured to him, and I'll explain why in a second. Uh, he, there's lots of like indications that he's lying constantly throughout this. Because if you happen to be a Jim Can't Swim aficionado, he has those dishonesty tells where he keeps going, I swear to God, I'll be honest. I'm not going to lie to you guys. If I was in your position, I wouldn't believe me either. Like he does, it's like on cue, like everything he says when he's being pressured, he, he resorts to these like honesty enhancers in the statements. They're like, mm, you only give me more reason to suspect that you're a bullshit artist, sir, when you say these things. Not the camera, trans music rights, that's right. I thought you were spamming trans rights and that was upsetting me greatly. I, I almost lashed out. I have my room ready, sharp and ready to go, but I took a second and I read it. Um, so the, it's a slow boil. They get started and they kind of give him an easy in. He talks about himself for a little bit. Uh, this is the, the first, this is, this is the first confrontation as Jim Cantswim would say, this is where they start to turn up the, the heat on him just a little bit. Oh, geez. I do not know how to input timestamps on this. So give me a second. 1025. Let's see if this works. Oh, you cannot hear it. That's not what I want. I want to watch oh, this yeah. so, so we all understand mm -hmm. what's going on here. <clears throat> all right, boys. Prepare the slave trade. We're selling a right off for profit. You know how much I love you, right? Oh, oh, Okay. Put the kid in the vehicle. Stay with her. Right, she's too valuable to escape. She's worth lots of money. That's okay. Up. Yeah. So, so, so. God damn it. Okay. So I'm going to let this play out a little bit more. And because uh, I want to show you Adam Krigler's reaction. Adam Krigler is top right. Shuddering Craig is top left. Um, in case you could not hear the, the video because the audio was fucked up, much like mine was. Uh, it, it, it's a little black girl. And I don't know what game this is. It appears to be like a um, one of those like the Walking Dead story games. It's a white man handing off a little black girl to a cop. And I believe in the, the context of the game, the cop is very crooked. DSP makes a joke that the, the black girl is like a runaway escaped slave and she's going to be sold on market. So Adam Krigler hears this 
And Adam Kriegler, from what I understand, is despite the U.S. flag in his room, he is an expatriate. He lives in Europe. He flies the United States flag, and he is literally brought to the verge of tears by the tastelessness of Dark Side Phil's joke. Let's listen. So what's going on there, man? Like, let's let's talk about that. Like, how does that when, when you see that? Oh. When, when you see that, how does that make you feel? What are you thinking? Do you regret that, saying that? Like, is that edgy sure. humor? Well, first of all, I have an honest question for you guys. You've, you've now seen it. I don't know if Adam has ever seen that clip before. Okay. No, is I that haven't. the first time? Okay. What do you think the joke was there? I'm just curious. What do you think I was trying to joke about? That you're selling that girl to the slave trade? Okay. That's what it sounded like, and that's pretty fucked up. Okay. Now, from what reference are you are, do you think... Um, how can I say this? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll approach it from the detractor perspective, okay? From the detractor perspective... No, I want to hear, I wanna hear we'll, your perspective of what you yeah. meant. Right, okay, yeah. Like, we'll do both. It's, we'll do it's both. pretty obvious what the detractors mean. Like, it, for, like for me, that would have put me on the detractor side because it sounds like you were making a joke about selling that little girl to the slave trade. How is it not that? Like, what did you mean? Oh, no, that, that's, it, that's it, absolutely... That's the joke, but there's a difference between saying that's oh. okay and it's funny, or the ridiculousness of the situation. See, you just saw that clip completely out of context, correct? You don't know what the, what's going on in the game right there. Okay, well, explain the context then. That sheriff is a corrupt sheriff. He is actually orchestrating a situation to try to murder people inside a building to protect his secrets. He's like a dark guy who controls the whole town, and no one knows this. Everything, everyone thinks the sheriff's a squeaky clean guy. So you, this is being revealed throughout the plot of the game. He's a scumbag, right? So the joke is this guy's such a scumbag. He's, he's saying to the dad, I'm going to save your daughter. Give me your daughter. Let's take him in and rescue her. But in reality, he's such a scumbag. He'd probably do something like that. He'd probably, you know, traffic people. That's the joke. Now, is it a joke that's acceptable by today's standards? By 80% of people, probably not. I agree with you. Do you think that's a joke? Like, do you think that's a joke acceptable by any standards? Like, like, like. Uh so they, they literally grill him. Do you think that that joke's okay to make? I really wish DSP had just gone, yeah, it's a joke. Shut the fuck up. But he doesn't. He like bends down and says, I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. I know I'm an imperfect person. He says this over and over again. And it's like, shut the fuck up. Uh, by the way, I don't know what Craig is doing to his camera. It really feels like he has like a filter on from like a camera phone or something because he has e-thought filters on his face is super smoothed out and very tellingly um his lips are blushed his lips are super pink and that's something that like a face cam filter does and it just makes him look like a gay pretty boy about to get slammed in the ass it's like you might, if you have like you know, I know men like Tucker Carlson has like a makeup artist who, you know, like brushes them before he goes on set. But you might want to turn off the e-thought filter for your live stream because it makes you look like a big homo. I, I don't I don't even even a decade ago, two decades right. ago, three decades like, ago. And, I and I, it's it's right. um, like I just want to hear your thoughts on that, because I, I think there's edgy content. Then there's inappropriate content. And we've, think, we've, look, we've all been we've all been guilty of edgy content before, you know, so I think it's it's dark humor. It's definitely skirting the risque. OK, not to say that I, I've heard much worse, obviously, from other people, but that doesn't make it OK for me to do it. I know that. Um and you know there's well, things... especially but especially get... with 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 what's following you around this i didn't timestamp the exact moment that he starts talking i'm just gonna skip ahead until i see him talking again i apologize i should have timestamped the exact moment that this right here he's talking again when i don't know the, con of... the context that you explained didn't make it any better i'll be honest uh, that's fine i agree because, I, that's fine. Well, i'm not i'm not sure which character you're even like portraying so you were were you acting as the sheriff in that situation yes. that's why i did that's why i did like the accent Yes. I, okay. I don't know. I, I, I think that like in a situation like that, like we live in a society that society now where literally you can't tell jokes like that because we live in a society like motherfucker. Calm down. Like, look, I, under, I understand that going into this interview that literally every second of this is going to be analyzed. And Adam understands that and you understand that. Right. But mm -hmm. 
and literally everything you say, there's a camera on you at all times, especially when you're a live streamer, you know? And I, I mean, for somebody who, who does this for a living, I just, I just feel like you, you have to be able to bite your tongue at, at some times and you need to know better. You, I mean, you said to yourself, you did this. Look, bro, I want to scream the N word every second of every day, but I have to put on my makeup filter and do the best that I can to withhold those demons inside me so I don't have to commit suicide on live on air to repent. Which was was flipped and uh i understand that i totally understand i am very forgiving of mistakes right but when there's a pattern of these things uh that go back over the course of, of, of time like it's no longer a mistake it's it's a you know it's a continuation so i, I don't know i i think look if you're saying that that the con I, i'm i'm also a big believer in taking people at their word right uh up until their actions show different um so you're saying that I hear a cricketer, God damn it. I really regret not clipping him just crying. Right? You'll find one time here, one time here, one time here, and then they oh, blow Phil. it up on the internet. You just you just gave so many different people a, a reason to do exactly oh, they, that. Oh, they will. I know that. But the thing is, they do it anyway. It doesn't matter what I say or do. This is what they do. So now you, you said that the, the <clears throat> switch in your brain you know was was off so that you you made that joke like do you do you have it in 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 there that it's like you thinking like when you said that you're like maybe that was too much or you were just free flowing and that's just kind of you um let me put it this way if i'm streaming and a joke pops into my head and and i feel oh man that's probably too much today i usually will not say it, usually it would be maybe an extenuating circumstance because but do you think and, that's observational mm, humor though one to edge you're three oh, what? Better. <sighs> not, I, like a, not, this was last year you said that was yeah. probably summer of last year i, yeah. I really really i'm gonna move on in just a second to the next part but i really really regret not getting the part where he literally sounds like he's on the verge of tears because he cannot believe that someone in the year 2023 would say something so offensive so a it, little it, black it just girl. feels like a, a big leap from going from a sheriff who is like trying to kill people to seeing a little black girl and thinking a slave trade. You oh, I mean? no, no, you this, said it. This is now it. you said it. See you said what? Black, you said black girl. It was that, on, on that's screen. That's correct. That's correct. And herein lies the problem. What? I didn't think that. In my it doesn't mind, matter. It doesn't I, you're matter. You're right. You're right. You're right. I agree with you. But in my mind, I didn't even see that. I didn't think that. That's, okay. you know, the joke was, this is a scumbag sheriff. He's literally lying to everyone. If he's going to traffic someone for profit, I wouldn't be shocked. It wasn't, she's a black girl going to the slave trade. And that's, that's stupid of me. Why the hell did I not make that connection in my head? Because I'm stupid. That's such bullshit. You know, <laughs> he's I lying. I don't know <laughs> if I believe that. You, you could just say it. that's fine. Okay. You don't have to believe me. I, you know, I can't make you believe me. I didn't think of it at, at one moment. Did I ever think, oh, she's a black girl, make a slavery joke? Absolutely not. It was about child trafficking, essentially, and that this guy would have probably that's even that worse. Such a piece of garbage. <clears throat> that's even worse. Okay. Let's talk about. Okay, fuck it. That wasn't the party. I, I feel like we can. Okay. I, I feel like okay. we can go on for. Okay. This part, um, I have. Uh, he explains that despite his income, he enjoys almost no comfort. Twitch told me, all, here's what I, where they told me. We launched an investigation into your history, and we found that over the years you have used, um, what was oh, the this word? Is the wrong it clip. wasn't racial. It was harmful slurs. Harmful slurs, as if basically I'm, I'm, saying really nasty racial or things that i do not say i do not say those things you you'd have to go back so far to see me say something like that and it was a one-off comment that was again i'm sure people will bring it up but it was specifically and we could address it individually if you want to but if you don't remember he was literally deplatformed because he he clearly had a tongue twister that sounded like the n-word but because he had said it in the past they didn't give him the benefit of a doubt or of the doubt. Um, and they just terminated his partnership agreement, even though he clearly just flubbed a statement. He really didn't say the N word. I remember this when it happened. Um, and he just got murdered by Twitter or by Twitch anyways. It, it was complete bullshit. The, the way they're portraying, oh, we found that you said this 100 years ago. 
sorry, you're gone. Like, what? I was on your site for four and a half years making money. You know, you never had an issue with it. Now you find something from the past. Oh, this. This, this is it. I'll just play it real quick. Wait, God damn it. Oh, is this like a remix song? Okay, fuck it. And I'll find that's it. not acceptable. And all of a sudden, what changed overnight? And the funny part was it happened to me. It happened to another streamer called Wings of Redemption and others all at once. Almost as if Twitch was having a culture shift where they decided they wanted problematic people off the site. They wanted well, that, them, you know. That is true. I mean, there, that, that happened to plenty of people. Right. I, I know so, people who got... A... I think this is a... One stationary negative 75% damage. That's really bad. So he says stationary and he changes mid thought to negative. So he says stationary neg and then neg or and then er, he says er like he says the stationary and then he changes mind negative but then catches himself because he realizes that he fucked up his sentence. Stationary stationary neg er negative and then he continues and that's what got him departed. I'll play it again. One stationary neg negative seventy five percent damage. That's really bad. It's so obvious what he's doing. It's just really unfortunate. And that got him deplatform. Never build your career on Twitch. They don't give a fuck about you at all. At all. Um, anyways. Uh, this is the part that I want to actually clip the first time. That was him discussing his deep, his uh, deep partnership with uh, Twitch. It just appears that, just from the outside looking in, that... Um, if you weren't making the money that you were making, you probably wouldn't live that lifestyle. Okay, fair enough. Um, I've talked about this many times over the last several years with my viewers. They say, what would you change if you could improve anything about your life? What would you do? And the answer would be somehow to take financial pressure off of me so I could spend more time with my wife. We've been married since 2019. We never went on a honeymoon. We haven't been on a trip since we got married. Um, can't can't afford it you know and i'm sure this is stuff will come up yeah you know, i went through a bankruptcy because of really bad choices in my past and a combination of online trolling ruining a lot of my financial income with my business um and a combination in tandem of that ruined a lot of stuff for me since the bankruptcy went through i have not been able to fully recover because of it's always something else and i'm tired of it i really am i'm looking where's the light at the end of the tunnel so i can have an extra day off with my wife once a week, which I think I deserve and she deserves. But every time, and again, I, I, I want to make something very clear here. I am not trying to put myself out as a victim, all right? The reason that a lot of the things have happened to me over the years is because of me. I know that. I'm a f uh, He proceeds to try and paint himself as a victim. There, there's like a weird thing with DSP that's really obvious in this interview, is that much like Ralph, he has this ego where sometimes it benefits you to humble yourself just a little bit and instead of allowing himself to to be humbled at all he he doubles down and he tries to posture this is actually something that both wings of redemption and boogie do it's a really weird thing it's definitely a, a proper low cal trait where um there are people, Boogie Wings and DSP all do this. It's a very common trait that they have, and I, I want to try to articulate this uh, as best as I can. They love to emphasize to their viewers who they rely upon for financial support that they really and truly need that financial support. They really need it. They need it for essential stuff, and um, it's very important, and you know they, they're hurting for money for so-and-so reason, and they would really appreciate it if he stepped up and he gave them some money. They, they, and that's, that's like, you know, you, you really have to throw aside, like, your, your face. You have to really kind of grovel, um, which many people would consider humiliating. But then, if you ever press DSP, Wings, or Boogie, or Ralph, for that matter... And you press them about their financial situation, they will always say, I'm doing just fine. I own a house. I have a car. My bills are paid. I have a financial plan that's working for me. I'm doing okay. And it's it's sort of like this weird thing where it's like in the right context where they're feeling 
safe, they're feeling that they can let their guard down to their audience that financially supports them, they will um they will they will beg, they will grovel. But when they're being defensive, they they switch on and go, actually I'm doing fine. I make lots of money. Fuck you. It's a contradiction that pisses people off. And that's it, it's a specific kind of mental um cognitive dissonance that really 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 pisses off trolls on the internet and call it, it, i think it's one of the defining characteristics of why they develop these huge hate fandoms is that they are simultaneously you know willing to to humble themselves and ask for handouts and then also are very willing to boast about how well off they are and it's a very irritating thing to witness in real time and it kind of makes you hate that person i don't know if there's a name a name for this um I haven't coined one for it. Maybe uh, people can come up with some some thoughts about how they would want to describe this this kind of behavioral pattern. But it's something that over over the time that I've spent moderating my site and paying attention to people like them, it's it's a reoccurring trend in personality, and it always is catastrophic. It builds up this massive sentiment of hatred directed towards them that. Uh, is really crazy, and that's why everyone kind of mentally lumps the the three of them together: Wings, DSP, and and Boogie. It's like there's something about them that's so samey. Is it because they're like fat video game guys, and the, the people don't realize it? But no, it's because they do this thing where they're simultaneously on the brink of disaster all 24 seven, and then also extremely well off. And fuck fuck the haters, catch me outside. How about that? It's it, very crazy. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's it's a paradox. But uh, sorry, I don't want to go on about that for too much longer. But that's one of my little personal observations that I, I like to hearken to every so often. Uh, the money thing will be touched on further. Don't you worry about that. In case you're a little bit upset that he was not called out for it, uh, it, it continues. This judge that was involved in the bankruptcy hearing was attacked online with so much shit. I had to go into meeting after meeting with both my bankruptcy attorney and this judge hours of work we went through line item by line item of all of my expenses i had to explain to a judge who has no idea what live streaming is the entire concept of being a live streamer and showing every single expense and line item and, and rationalizing what it was to my business this is this this is this right you know and it, it took so much work at the end of the day after all that extra work and time and money that had to be put into my bankruptcy it went through the judge understood. I showed them everything. If anything, if anyone should see line item by line item what my business expenses are, it should probably be the judge who's going to make a ruling on if I should be granted bankruptcy or not, right? That's the government, a government representative, correct? They saw it all. They went through all of it. And at the end of the day, they said, this all makes sense. Approved. Well, so, so it, but in the vast majority of time, winners in bankruptcy experience like some sort of relief. So the reason they're talking about the bankruptcy to give context to what he just said, there was a question about his business expenses. Um, DSP claimed under penalty of perjury that he may, he spends $5,000 a month on his business of streaming video games on Twitch, which is ludicrous. There is no way, regardless of how poor he is with managing his business financials, that he is expending $5,000 a month on his business, on, on streaming for Twitch. Regardless of how expensive his condo is, regardless of how you know juiced up his internet connection is, um, I'll, I'll put it this way. The Kiwi Farms is an incredibly expensive service to maintain on the budget of a single person that cannot process credit cards. Uh, the Kiwi Farms in its totality is less than $5,000 a month. I don't know what he is doing, Rather, rather, I do know what he's doing. Um, we believe, or when I say we, I'm not including myself. The A-Log Consortium, the DSP detractordom of the uh, Kiwi Farms and elsewhere, have posited the theorem that the $5,000 a month charge includes his video game, mobile game, gotcha spending. Because if you don't know, DSP is cripplingly addicted to spending money on mobile gotcha games like WWE championships. And it's believed 
that he filed um, his gotcha spending as a business expense under the assumption that because it's a video game, um, it then can be classified as a business expense. However, under uh, while talking in court on the televised hearing that people had access to, well, it wasn't televised. It was on the. It was recorded, and it was not supposed to be recorded. Only creditors were supposed to have access to the recording, but it was recorded and published to the internet. But in that, he claimed that it was not um, that the gotcha shit was not included. But now he claims that in a separate hearing, as a result of the volume of people saying that DSP was frauding the court, the judge personally set him aside and went over the line items of his bankruptcy with his uh, with his attorney together, and came to the conclusion that his filings were accurate and and would be accepted by the court. That's what he's saying, and I believe that because I believe that once he got the um, the judge in the room, old guy doesn't really understand how people play video games and make money. He says, you know, one of my main game, I, I all my video game spending is business related. This one game is really popular um, and it's important, and I and I play it. And I think that the judge just accepted it, and you know, there's no reason for the judge to be like, wait a second. Gotcha games. So you actually stream your mobile phone games on Twitch? I don't believe that. I think that you only stream PC games. Not gonna happen. Okay. I'm sorry that so many people were disappointed by the the bankruptcy and how it played out, but everybody there, from the judge to the uh, accountants from the different creditor firms that were representing them, you know, in in the courtroom, to the attorney for DSP, everybody in that courtroom was looking to get through the day as quickly and painlessly as possible. And just because you, as expert accountants of the Kiwi Farms and the detractor, you know, Discord groups and shit, found discrepancies, does not mean that the court's going to care. That's just how it works in real life. Um, so the, I, fa- I, I personally found that that admission that he um, got one-on-one time with the judge to be interesting. And I don't think he's lying there. He didn't give me any tells that he was lying. Um, this is, I just called this apologizing, and I believe they get him to do a little truffle shuffle and explain how um, he explains that he's not he's not a bad person anymore. He's all he's redeemed. Yeah, yeah, because because I want to know who's so hard to get a hold of. Uh, what's his name? Sh- Shady K. I don't even know if he's even around anymore in the Street Fighter community. I mean, in the early two thousands, I destroyed this guy for no reason, no good reason. I don't know, you know, I just, I latched on to people because look, if I, more, the more I make fun of this guy or the more I try to attack these people, I get over, right? And it caused so much drama. You know, people, we almost fought at Evo. It's so stupid. Now I look at it, I'm like, boy, I was dumb. What kind of dumb shit was I? I thought I was a pro wrestler. I thought, oh man, I'm talking shit. And we're going to, you're going to have big rivalries at, at, you know, fighting game championships. It's the dumbest shit, you know? Right. So is, that is this long, long tram? I um I I only noted this timestamp so I could say um in parentheses at, at two ten thirty five parentheses point out wrestling. It is my duty to once again inform the viewers of my podcast that enjoying wrestling is in fact a mental illness, and is the professional wrestling is the anime of the West. It is the same veins of weird detached from reality syndrome uh, that you see in the most disgusting degenerate of weebs. But this is one of the things that I never went. It's wrestling that made him like this exactly fucking right. Out of my way to disprove because it's stupid. It's ludicrous. It's, can it's, I, can I ask you, Phil? this is specifically about the WWE champion shit. Um, him, him explaining uh, uh, the allegations. So, ha- have sure. you ever spent money on this game? Of course I have. Yes. Have you spent a lot of money on this game? Good question. What does a lot mean? Anything over a hundred dollars is too much on a mobile game. So probably it, when the game first came out, yes, I spent over a hundred dollars on it. That was okay. twenty seventeen when it first came out. Trust me, I'm first on this game. Probably now, for all the wrong first. reasons. So yes, the that's another year. lying tale because it's it's difficult for a hot man to to lie. When a hot man lies. There's those bolts in the brain that say, nah, boy, that ain't right. That ain't right with Christ. So liars will typically add in words like probably to to make it so that they're not technically lying, or at least when they're white. 
Wait, wait so, you just flex on how good you are at the game? <laughs> no, no, no. I said I'm versed in the game because I, I have to know about it because they, they're freaking putting me in conspiracies about it and shit. It's ridiculous. Okay, I don't well, want to okay. know about it. Then, how, then, how much money have you spent in this game? Unless they're Anglo, Anglo, exactly right. You might, you do you mind saying? T total, I couldn't tell you. It's it's definitely total under a thousand dollars over the years that it's been in operation for sure. Okay, not over a thousand dollars. No, no, absolutely that's not, not. That's not what that's not what people think. That's correct. Oh, think, oh they I think know. That you're you're <laughs> some sort of a, a whale in that game. Oh, I know. I've seen every. You know. Well, okay. I haven't seen every video. I've heard it all. First, it was like. Thousands, then it was ten thousand, then it was twenty, then it was forty. Now it's a hundred, I think. A hundred thousand supposedly I've spent on this game. Well, we started talking about it and you instantly went into just attacking other people. Like we don't have to like your detractors. Like they they may deserve it. I don't know. But we, we can have this conversation without even bringing them up. Sure. Right? We'll we'll bring uh so again to remind you, in case you're not following along, DSP allegedly spends most of his money on gotcha games in particular wwe championship um i will give some brief background i happen to know this pretty well um dark side phil uses the twitter handle they call me dsp they call me dsp is one of the top wwe championship players in the entire world in the leaderboard which usually means that he is one of the biggest whales in the entire com um the entire game there's no way that you can legitimately level up a single account um, to these super high ranks without spending thousands and thousands of dollars for characters that are just better than other characters that you get by grinding. It's just, the game is literally designed to reward you for sp for spending money. So people find that there's this, they call me DSP account and the uh, WWE championships, which is a game that people knew you played. They find the discord, they find his account there. I believe his, he was logged into his account like, on their discord their their guild discord that his account was a part of and then um i will save this but the they added it up and they believe that it was thousands and thousands of dollars and because this account still plays um it's thousands more at this point in time and i will move ahead to the next timestamp because there's something i want to say but i'm going to save it for the correct moment years that you know if, if so I, i'm just gonna briefly in my head try to go over what i remember apparently at first it was that there was an account in the game that's the name of the account was they call me dsp okay? which is which is also your twitter handle that's correct mm -hmm. and so just by that association they're assuming that's me in the game okay now from what I'm going to understand after that, after I guess at some point it had been asked on a stream or whatever, is this you? And I said, no, that's not me in the game. It is not, by the way. That is not my account in the game. Um, what is your account in the game? That I'm not going to say. That's that, that, And if you're going to say why, because back when I signed up for that game in 2017, there had never been any drama around mobile games or anything like that that I had been involved in. No one had ever asked me the question of what's the name of your account. I have a, an, a, an account name on basically my Apple device that kind of crosses over a lot of different accounts, okay? And if I were to tell you information about my account, these people will absolutely use that to hurt me. They will try to use this data to get into other accounts. They will probably try to commit identity theft, impersonate me with Apple. I can't do that. I've already been uh, okay. through that. Okay, so, so on the record, you're, you're saying that uh, that account they call me DSP is not you. That's correct. Okay. So categorically denies that they call me DSP is DSP. He, he contends, he literally believes that the account belongs to a troll who has spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to try and make it look like DSP is taking the money that he's saying are for taxes and other important business expenses and personal expenses and spending them on a shitty mobile gotcha game that's not even fucking good to begin with. That is his narrative at this point. And I believe that when he walked into this interview, he had thought some of these things through. He thought, I'm gonna say this, and then if they ask me for this, I'll have this excuse ready to go. And then at a certain point, when you try to build up a lie like that, you'll come to these dead ends where if you're confronted in real time, you won't have a chance to respond. And up in the top left, pretty boy 
Stuttering Craig is concocting a solution to this. Um, but I will save that for a bit. Just know that an answer to this idea that I can't tell you what my account actually is to easily prove that um, that I I do not actually my because obviously if he had another account that had a thousand dollars pumped into it and was a moderate level like a reasonable level, he could just show that and then like oh okay that's how it is. But he says he can't do it because of the name. Now, and Southern Craig is, is contemplating this, but I'll move on because in the same breath, he then goes on to say, in case you also don't know this, DSP had a bank account link and the bank account link showed that thousands of dollars were being sent to Apple iTunes, presumably to um, through their iStore to purchase credits for this mobile gotcha game. I look, I, I hate to bring this up, I hate to bring this up, but, but I'm but I'm going to, because I feel like it needs to be addressed. Go for it. People have been very aggressive with you to the point to where they have leaked bank statements from you, right? And that's obviously not cool at all. It's it's ridiculous that somebody would go to that length. And it's, a, it's honestly upsetting, but it's out there, right? And there have been, you know, according to these leaks, there have been dozens, hundreds of transactions mm -hmm. to uh to the apple store uh some many over hundreds of dollars um that that had been there were those your transactions no so so those were not tied to you at all no those okay the bank leaks now see now we have to get into the identity theft thing okay um well let's just talk about the bank leads first well they're tied to that Okay. You know what I mean, like they go hand in hand. Um, those bank go ahead, leaks. Explain it then. Yeah. Sure, the bank leaks are not accurate. Those are not. That is not my account. So it's the person who took your identity was spending money on out in the Apple Store. No, that's that's not my account at all. Whatever so, that is, is not me. This is a new thing. I have never heard him make this categorical denial that the bank accounts for him either that's new um so at the time that the bank account leaks things happened he admitted that he was the victim of identity fraud and blamed his trolls so now he has cleverly tried to wrap this around to deflect the mobile gotcha game thing by saying that the bank leaks are also fake um the, if I remember correctly, the bank leaks also contained the fraudster dialing in like his his account and using his account information to get a balance to prove that the expenditure towards WWE was happening in real time and had like a truly like the recordings of the bank automated system to back this information up. He claims that's all fake. All of it. I've never heard this before. And he's saying that the identity theft that he was talking about at the same time the fake bake links happened was a completely coincidental separate occasion where he was actively being the victim of identity fraud that was unrelated to the bank leaks. If that makes sense at all. It's kind of hard to explain because it's so layered. However, I love this clip. And I'll tell you why. Many times, the Kiwi Farms has been accused of deoxing. And in one particular instance related to Dark Side Phil, we host the illegal, criminally obtained, banking and financially identifying information of Dark Side Phil. How do you respond to these criminal allegations? Well, now my official response is they're all fake. I have put this into the OP to say that as of March 17th, 2023, Dark Side Phil has said, that all this information is fake. So now, motherfucker, you want to try and come at and say that I'm hosting some some banking information that was obtained by a criminal? Uh, as a matter of fact, sir, I host no such information because, as it turns out, it's all bullshit. So, buh, 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 buh. put it right there in the OP. Let everybody know. Now back to now back to your regularly scheduled video, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Let it, let us continue. Let us continue. 
Uh, okay, so this is Phil. I have this time stamp says Phil contradicts his own narrative hard. And if I think this is what I think it is, um, I can go back to what I was going to say well, before. Too. All right, I'm right. I'm a one of the core players. This uh, this all started because you guys probably don't know the full history. This all started many many years ago before there was tons of financial issues that were public. Uh, I was playing a different WWE game. It was called WWE Supercard. All right. This mm -hmm. one I actively spent a lot of money on. I will tell you guys this. I can't tell you the exact. I definitely I got addicted to that one. Everyone knew it. I talked. So about you it have been streams. addicted to mobile games. Yes, I have. I've publicly admitted this that I spent way too much money on that. And there was another one that was called Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle. That one as well. This was before you know the way before the years before the bankruptcy and everything. That I was spending I was spending too much money on them. And at that point, I, I I stopped. I cut off. I stopped playing WWE Supercard and the Dokkan Battle completely. When I saw what I was doing, I stopped myself from doing it. And then, you know, I've casually played other mobile games over the years. And basically what happens is with, with my... And I know you guys are going to say you're changing the narrative. I Please bear with me with this. No, it's it's not okay? helping your case at all, though. You're, I know, but, but I'm being honest. I'm going to be honest with you. you know, I'm not going to lie to you guys. This is all public record, you know. I talked about those games in the past and with these detractors, what they do is they find a narrative and they stick with it. If I can dispute it or disprove it, or if it gets somehow disproven, then they drop it and they latch onto the ones that they can't, that I haven't been outright been able to disprove. This particular one, they've been looking for something to get me on for years and years and years and every single thing gets disproven or just forgotten about. This is the one I can't, Find a way. Use Craig. Use Craig. Send him. Send him screen. Ah, bah, 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 bah. No, no, no. I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> so he comes out and he says that, um, yes, I have addictive personality. Yes, I've spent a lot of money on mobile games. No, it was not the specific mobile game. It was other mobile games. And he explicitly says that he was spending his money on the mobile gotcha games before he had money issues. This is my favorite thing of the entire interview is how he outlines that there was a specific point of time where everything was going very well. He had no issues with money. It looked like he was getting to, as he says, the light at the end of the tunnel. And then he just started playing mobile games. And if you listen to him, you would believe he played mobile games. He spent a thousand dollars on the WWE thing said, Oh God, this is so silly. I wasted money that I should be saving. And then he put it away or just continued to play it casually for as a free player on different games over the years. However, he in inadvertently confesses to a timeline where everything is going fine. He has no issues with money. He starts playing with, with mobile games. And then immediately after that, he is bankrupt. He literally explains how he got addicted to games and bankrupted himself. But he's just lying that that was the issue. He never at any point explains what his money, what the issue is. He says that everything was going well. He, um... He, he had no issues and then he started playing the games and then suddenly he has $5,000 business expenses that he literally cannot explain what it is. He refuses to, he outright refuses to, he starts getting asked to explain his, um, his expenses at some point and he tries to outline them and then, um, fails. He, 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 he's just lists like his mortgage and stuff. He does not add up to a $5,000 or anywhere near it. It's really crazy to watch in real time. Um, let me find the next step, and then I will get to tell you the fun thing, the really, really, really fun thing that uh, the genius stuttering Craig came up with. Uh, it will, uh, well, he'll explain it, but I'll explain why it's such a funny thing, too. I'll, I'll give my little take, even though it should be obvious. There's an easy out here, Phil. I, like, I'm offering you the, yeah, the easy out. All you got to do is just take a quick screenshot. You can email it to me. Mm. It's done. We all move on. The detractors move on. And everybody goes, okay, you know what? You know, and, and, and we all move on. That's it. That's it. It's, it's very simple, man. And we want to make this happen. Like, I, I, want, I want you to be able to move on from it. I want, I want the detractors to be able to move on from it. I want the internet to move on from it. I want all the WWE content to, to, to be done. Like, it's, it's there, man. It's there. Like, yeah. let's, let's, let's make this happen. Like, mm -mm. 
And then we're, we all move on and we can start talking about other things. Okay. I'll, like I said, I'll think about it. I got to see how I, if, how I can do it. And, uh, you know, again, what liability? I'm not going to 100% agree to it, but I'm very strongly considering doing it. Let's see if we can do it before the end of the stream. We have a captive audience here. They want to know, right? Oh, I the, no, hold on, hold on. I told you I'm not even doing anything with my phone or anything on the stream. I'm definitely okay. not doing it today on the stream. Okay. It's just, okay. you know, you got to understand there's liability here. This okay. Is, this okay. is not just a discussion for me either. I'm talking my wife, you know, everything here. Because if this okay. account gets out, that's a lot of stuff that now can be compromised. Okay. All right. Look, like I said, family, I get it. Right. Totally understand. Okay. And then, then, you know, when you decide that it's, this is something that you're comfortable with, you can, you can email it to me. The email will only be seen by me, not anybody else. Okay. And I will delete it immediately after. And, uh, and I will, you know, I, I will serve as your confidant in this process. So, all right, well, let's, I, I mean, I don't really know how to move on from this. I don't. So that's, that's the great thing is that that is the perfect counter to his argument. Just show me. I'm not going to like tank my reputation and stab you in the back for no purpose, you know, just to dox you. What, what a terrible dickhead thing to do. Like even me, I can't do something like that. I, I rely on people to trust me. On a site like the forum, you know, people have to have absolute confidence that if they trust me with something, then I'll, I'll um, respect their trust. But here we have a, a, all he has to do pull his phone and say, look, this is on private. This is my game. This is my actual account. You can see that it's level, you know, 10 and not level 20,000 or whatever the fuck. Um, I, I play about a game a week, just like I said, and then boom, he can vouch for that and say that's exactly what he said. And it makes sense. Um, he refuses. <laughs> he says that he has to have time off. He has to quote unquote discuss it with Cat. Uh, which is bullshit. He frequently defers to Cat and says, oh, I have to discuss this with my wife first. But that's just like him buying time. I have to be given time to go offline and figure out a way to Photoshop this evidence because I know for sure that I am uh, I'm signed into this account. And if I pull it up on stream, it'll be the, the one that's worth $100,000 of fictional money. Um, and I, I really love it. Uh, uh, you know, I can give the pretty boy all the, the trouble that I want to for, you know, whatever. Especially in the first hour where they pull out, like, the, oh, you can't tell jokes card. But this this gotcha is so perfect. And I wonder if someone, like, helped him with this, like, live on air, like, in the side. Or um, if he actually came up with it on his own. But you could tell he was thinking of a solution to this. And it's very funny. Um... So there, there's more to this that I'll get to. There's something that I want to say uh, in regards to the WWE shit. Oh, I did not timestamp this, but I will um, comment on it. He mentions that at some point, while he was trying to get to the bottom of all this, he contacted the support for this mobile gacha game company and asked about name changes. This is his own words. I, I kind of regret not clipping it, actually. But he says that um, he contacted the support company. He's like, hmm, can they change their name? And the support company replied saying, we do not change names. But anybody who follows this would know that the account, they call me DSP, has changed their name twice, uh, including to the name uh, Down From The Rafters. And there's an interesting thing about that where Down From The Rafters is 18 characters long. The maximum length of a name for that game is 16 characters long, which means that if you were someone who had put $100,000 into this mobile gotcha game and you contacted support and said, I need a name change right fucking now, they got somebody, a, a database engineer for the company to go in and manually change his name in every place that they could have, even though the functionality did not exist to actually do this automatically, because that guy spends so much on the game, it literally buys the time of a database engineer to do this. And it's happened twice. And in some places, it still lists him as they call me DSP. So what he, I, this is the same exact thing where it's like he sh showed his hand by saying, I played the game before I had money issues. It's the exact same thing. I contacted support to figure out they don't do name changes. So I'm really miffed about this. Like, all you've revealed to me, as far as I'm concerned, is that 
you contacted them about a name change. They told you they don't do name changes. And then you said, I have spent $100,000 on your fucking mobile game. Change it now. And they did because they don't want to lose a, a, a serious mega whale uh, for their company. Uh, th as far as I'm concerned, that's all that admission uh, points to in terms of when you like follow it logically. Uh, let us continue. There's a little bit more. And then there's something very special towards the end of the, the stream. Or of their stream, rather. Talk about this. So, uh, let's. About the fact that his fucking Twitter account is the same exact avatar that he's fucking using for this troll account on my website. Oh, by the way, I have your IP, I have your name, and I have your address. So, congratulations. You fucked up. You really did. Be awesome one on Twitter. I have all your fucking personal information. Now, I'm going to say this up front. I'm not going to give it out. I'm not going to give it out. This is not a doxing video. I do not condone it. I will never give out someone's personal information or anything like that whatsoever. However, understand something. I got you. How about the fact that it's okay. fucking Twitter? Well, do you think that's okay? It sounds like a threat, right? That's the first time I've sure actually does. heard this clip since I said it. Pretty actually. sure it was a threat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that, that is definitely a threat. That is, I mean, okay. No, it's not. My Again, this is kind of goes back to, I was, you know, you tell a dark joke. You yeah, it, it was. One way, it came out a different way. What I, what, what I was getting at in that clip was, this is someone who had hurt me. I don't know if you want to get into the specifics of what they had done. It's kind of a moot point, right? Um really badly it's actually one of the things that have actually actually hurt my business overall financially since then okay i've never so really it justifies it. it no it doesn't justify that's it what you're that's why well, you wouldn't have said it otherwise it, it got me that angry it got me that angry they had actually hurt me so bad for no reason i don't even know who that guy is all right and the only reason i knew is because someone had found that information sent it to me i didn't find it myself and i said that on the stream because i was so upset and essentially what I, what I should have said was, you know, this is a situation you hurt me so bad. I don't know who you are. And, you know, I think I'm going to go to the authorities with this. That's what I should have said. I shouldn't have said, oh, I got all your information. And blah, blah. You're right. 100%. You're right. I never, so, I never doxed so that So it guy. was a threat. So you admit that it was a threat. It was, it was me venting anger. That's a threat, but dude. It was, it was me. Correct. It was me venting anger. Thank in a you. threatening manner. Yes. But I never did anything with it, nor did I ever dox that person. Their information never went on the internet publicly, or if it did, it wasn't me that did it. Like I said, someone sent me the information. It's funny how he's so willing to apologize for certain things. Like, I'm sorry I told a racist joke. Um, I know I, did, I didn't mean it in a racist way, but I, you know, I totally understand. I apologize for that. Versus like how he is with the detractors. It's like... I'm sorry that I can't, that I allowed my anger to get the best of me. That's not really an apology. When when you do something and you're like, I'm sorry that I allowed myself to kick your ass. That's not really a, a real apology. That's like, I, I regret the consequences of my actions <laughs> versus I regret doing it to you. I feel bad that I did this thing. Um, <laughs> uh, so this is Bill jerking off. Bro. Phil, hmm? how the fuck did you not know the camera was on? You know what I'm talking well, I, about. I, I was I wasn't gonna talk about this, but I, I, mean, we, I, I did. Yeah. What the fuck, man? I mean, come Dude, on. Sadly, <laughs> when it happened, I I tried to to, to spin fuck? it. I tried to spin it in a very positive light, and I I rolled with it. It's one of the rare times where I learned in my life you roll with it and it'll go away. It never went away, but at least people, you know, it's just something funny now, right? <laughs> Imagine if I had reacted to that the same way I reacted to this is how you don't play. Like, that would have been the end for me. Like, if you, this guy, what's he going to say? He didn't do it or whatever. Of course, yeah, it happened. It's something stupid. But do you, the truthful story, sadly, is not happy, okay? Um, here's the truth. I've, I've told it before, but never in this context. So in 2016, it was probably the second worst year of my life. Everything was falling apart in my personal life. I have moved out here to Washington. I used to live in Connecticut my whole life. I, um, Washington, Washington, I clipped this pretty long because it's a four. I, I love that it's like a four minute reaction to the question of why did you jerk off on camera? All this stuff. Her family members being harassed. My family members being harassed. 
our whole relationship fell apart. Okay. In 2016, I was living with her and we had two separate lives. It was like two roommates rather than a romantic relationship. It was messed up. Like we we're supposed to be together and we're really not. Um, What's interesting to, the to this is that um, the jerking off on camera thing, his, his reaction to it is very much, I'm, I was depressed and not having sex with my wife, so I masturbated. Which, I mean, the real, the real quandary that they were posing was, how did you not know that you were on camera as you masturbated? How did you allow this to happen? But his backstory is actually addressing the allegation from, why were you masturbating, period. Which makes me think that, because he's talking about Panda Lee at this time, it makes me think that Panda Lee probably dumped him because he was looking at porn or masturbating. That's what it comes across as, as opposed to, you know, oh, he embarrassed himself. It really feels like she she left him because she felt betrayed by that, just based on the way that he's answering to it. That's just my interpretation of his response. Point where she went off and had her own life. She had her own friends, her own job. I was doing my thing when no one knew this. Everyone thought everything was fine. We, we pretended, we smiled, whatever. No one knew that. I was depressed. I was really messed up in the head at that point. The way that I saw it was this room was the only place in the house where she never went. She never came in here. Okay. So this room was like my safe space. I know that sounds stupid, but it was like, this is the one place I can be away from that. And I can have my own safe place. And in particular, I couldn't tell you the specific day what had happened, but I, I guarantee you it was something awful had happened, an argument, a fight, whatever it was. And I came in here and back then, my, I was very different than today. I'm professional. I have layouts blocking the screen and everything. Back then I just had, you know, my, my you, you dashboard. A, like a couch in the corner that you exactly. could go, do that, go do that this, now. Yeah. So I had the, the camera had been left on from the day before. Back then, I didn't do face cam like I do today. Today, this is a common thing to have the face cam on every single stream. Back then, it was a rarity. I only did it for like FromSoft games where I was going to get really upset. People like to see me rage on camera, right? So that, again, that meant that dark side feel character. Uh, this is still going on. I have about another minute and a half of this. The, the, the question was, how did you jerk off on camera? Um, I left it on. And so I come in here and Actually, I'm feeling like shit. breaking breaking news i will be pausing the dsp jerking off explanation to give some breaking news ladies and gentlemen um coming from brian gata holloman uh, apparently the judge has completely thrown out ethan rouse filing that i just read on stream as being irrelevant to the case and will not be accepted by the court <laughs> awful, like probably depressed awful thing and I, I, you know, I beat one off to relieve myself before a stream. And then it's all over the internet. And I, oh, the camera was on, huh? So it was depression. Oops. It was part of it. It was definitely part of it. Like, obviously, you don't sit down in front of a, you know, it, it, why would you even do that? I mean, what an idiot to do that, in, even in a situation. But it was probably something so horrible, you know, another argument. There's many of those. So you said the, the camera was on um, and then you started the stream and then did that or like you were prepping for a stream, but the camera was on. So it, it just happens. Yes. So basically, I, I have a on question. Uh, oh, I'm, yeah. sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. I'm just trying to walk my through. <laughs> okay. Uh, what was the lead time between starting the stream and uh, completion? Because that's pretty fucking impressive. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, Not just long. Say, it was like a minute. Okay, I'll cut it off there. It goes on. Like they, they're seriously interested in him masturbating. This is the more interesting part. At a certain point, Daniel Keem of Keemstar and uh, Drama Alert pop on to the stream to talk to Phil. This requires some explanation for those who do not follow Dark Side Phil too much. Daniel Keem um, offered a podcast to Wings of Redemption, Boogie. And, and Dark Side Phil. It would be called Low Cows, not L O L L O W, Low Cows. And it would be a uh, podcast, uh, presumably about. I, pres I imagine they would get. And I, I thought about this because Dark Side Phil was the only one that rejected this offer. 
And I was thinking, you know, well, I can understand, you know, Daniel Keem probably offered them a shitty deal because, you know, he wants to make money. I was thinking, like, he probably wanted half, and they would split the other half between themselves, and he'd probably want exclusivity to merchandise and, you know, advertising deals and yada, yada, and so on and so forth because he does all the business. And then... um but I thought, you know, that would be a good opportunity for, if it was fair, it would be a good opportunity for Phil, uh, assuming that everybody got like a quarter of the, the business and everyone split the profits for away. Daniel Keem did the business smarts that the other three don't have. And they just get, I mean, it's literally free money. You show up once per week, you have a prompt, you do a stream for a couple hours. Daniel Keem and his team do all the editing, all the marketing. You get some bullshit, like you get a, you know, a... Uh, a sponsorship with a VPN a, and a password manager company, something like Proton Mail. Proton would be a perfect. This is like don't don't end up docs like we did by Proton Mail. Like I don't know what I would do without Proton VPN, guys. You know that kind of shit. Easy money. And I thought that's what they sh that, that would be fair, but you know knowing Keemstar, that's probably not it. Daniel Keem gets on air and explains exactly that. That was literally his intentions. And DSP would get $50,000, each of them would, just for signing. No, Even if it doesn't take off, even if it's a complete failure, he still gets $50,000 cash just to get on board. And he turned it down because he does not like Keemstar. Uh, I'll let him explain it because they argue and I think it's worth just hearing in its entirety. So this is Keemstar trying to figure out what the fuck happened where DSP turned down the easiest money that has ever been offered to anyone ever. Platform, Because I understand this business very, very well. And even though you have that hate, you know, they are viewers. They are your customers. The detractors are your customers the haters are your customers and they're more loyal than the people that give you money that donate on your stream the people yeah, that hate that you going are way that you're more talking loyal. about mm -hmm. that's like you can't pay for that shit. i mean look at how many people are here 2500 people are here i it's just it, it it's you have a legitimate fan base those haters those people that don't like you are your fans and i want it to solve this issue for not just you but wings and boogie i looked at all of you guys your lol cows right you have more haters than like supporters right but really they're all fans they are all fans they're all obsessed with you and watching your content non-stop the solution really is to get the three of you to do a podcast all right those haters are going to watch. They're going to absolutely love that these three guys have come together to make content. Now, between the three of you, you guys don't have the business sense to like really figure this out and make this thing actually happen. But I do. All right. And you guys don't even understand how valuable, valuable you are as individuals, as entertainers, because you look at the numbers and you're looking at everything and like, oh, well, I've fallen off. And you know, that's the mindset that you have, right? But I have a different mindset for each and one of you that you guys are amazing entertainers, just not in the way that you want to be, right? You're lol cows, but there's so much value there. By putting the three of you together and you know, each one of you would own 25% of this podcast, all right? We never got to have this conversation, so I, I do wanna have it now, even though I know you're not gonna do it, all right? I would also own 25%. I would do the business aspect of it. I've had many success selling podcasts um, to exclusive deals with Spotify and other companies, multi-million dollar deals, all right? I wanted to put the three of you together for this show. I would do the business side of the things. And I knew that all three of you would be in a situation where you didn't really trust me or you're like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work and you'd have a lot of doubts. So I was just going to take my own money and and take one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, give you each just to start off before we even filmed an episode 50 grand up front to let you know that I was serious. And I believe in this concept and this idea. Now, I call Boogie first. I instantly get on the phone with Boogie. All right. He loves the idea. He understands it. He gets it. He reaches out to Wings. Wings is down. And now it's time to talk to DSP. 
Boogie, the way I understand it, called you, contacted you, and told you what was going on, right? He DM'd me on Twitter, and we had a brief conversation back and forth in DMs. And, and he told you that I wanted to do a podcast with the three of you, right? Uh, yes, I had no idea that's what you were trying to contact me about because we never talked. But he said that there was this idea for a podcast, correct? So you so, didn't know. <laughs> so, so Boogie told you or didn't tell you? Boogie told me that he and, and Wings had spoken to Keem mm -hmm. and that Keem wanted to do a podcast with all three of us. No money or anything was discussed. He just say, you know, he, he wants to do a podcast with all three of us. I didn't know that's what Keem was trying to reach out to me. I, I said maybe that's what it was. I didn't know because I never spoke with him. Phil, hearing this, hearing this and, and hearing the, uh, the business opportunity that was laid, I don't even know if it's still there or not, but uh, what are your thoughts right now, given what Keem has said to you? Thoughts? Like, yeah. you mean? Yeah, yeah just, you just as, as, he's, as he's laid this out. Like, lay, lay out your feelings based on what Keem Star has, has laid out for you. I have, I have absolutely no problem doing anything with Boogie or Wings. In fact, you know, I had the conversation with, with uh, Boogie back and forth a little bit more later in the year. Would he be interested in maybe doing a podcast with me or me behind his show or whatever? You know, whatever it may be. These guys, you know, I covered. I did a react about Wings last year about his documentary. Um, you know, that me doing a collab with them, just doing a fun podcast is not out of the question for the future. But your issue is with Keemstar and his business principles. Correct. Okay. So understand. So e even if there's an opportunity for you to remove yourself from quote unquote level one and and potentially have an opportunity further down the line to potentially sell the podcast to something and, and put 50 grand in your pocket initially, that's that's a 100% no go for you. Oh man. See, I didn't know that was, you put me on the spot. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's what because we do. That's an interview. A, man. This is a discussion that cannot be just made by me. It has to be made by my wife. You know, we have to talk about it because this was a discussion we had that you know, sorry, Keem, I'm going to, can I criticize you fairly if I'm, if I'm reasonable and don't, you know, not under the belt, can we, can I be honest about you? Sure. You can say whatever you want about me. Sure. But um, I just want to represent how I feel about the situation. I'm not done, but go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So Keem, you are someone who, when you look at your history oh, on the internet. Sorry, that's where I was supposed to cut it off at, right? When he says, you can say whatever you want about me. Okay. Listen. I know that people clip everything I say and send it to everyone at forever. Okay, listen. I am addressing through a clip that someone has clipped and sent to Daniel Keem. Change the name of the podcast. Change the name of the podcast from Lol Cow to anything else. Call it the Kings of Hate. Call maybe even defer to DSP what you think the name should be. Just call it something self-aggrandizing. Uh, the the Kings Kings of Content. King of Kings, anything like that. Just make it aggrandizing. Um, you know, make it something that, that sounds fluffy. And then, you know, say like, you know, I talked it over to Boogie and, you know, whatever. And, you know, we think that this this kind of podcast would suit you better, not something that's like that. Just change the name of it to something that would in, impress his ego. And then tell him that he's right. It doesn't even have to make sense. Just say, you know what? I thought about what you said, and I think you're right. Don't don't elaborate. Don't name a specific. Just say, I think you're right, and then he'll bite. He'll bite. I'm telling you, he will bite. Just say that. I think you're right, and I think it should be called the King of Kings or the King of Content. That's all it requires. Send him a fucking email or whatever, and 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 I swear he'll go for it. I am I am on board with this idea. I want to see. The King of Content podcast, or the Kings of Content podcast, starring these three people. You know, I wish I wish you success in your endeavors. <laughs> um, so that's the the Keemstar move. I felt that was worth including because it does put a caper on this long running thing that has been uh, getting discussed and kicked around for a long time. No, no, no. You don't need him to do it correctly. DSP can show up. Listen, literally, it's literally no work. Have your have the Keemstar production people find topics 
and just say like, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Hit them with a couple different topics over four hours, reduce it to a two to three hour long video, give them some deference over editing stuff out. Um, maybe have a contract clause where if you want something edited out that the other people want left in, that would probably hurt the show not to include, then you can deduct from their pay or some shit like that. I don't know. Work it out. My point is, is that he needs that money and he would, if he, if you can placate his ego enough, he'll bite. And if Keemstar is willing to just say like the most, you know, you know, uh, superficial thing possible, you know what? I think you're right. And I think that it should be called, um, the, you know, Kings of video game history, the best let's players ever on the face of the planet. <laughs> maybe my my personal pick for it would be the bankrupt the bald and the the buck broken for um dark side phil wings of redemption and boogie uh in that order but i don't think that they would agree to that one so we we'll have to make do with what we can get and finally this is a five hour long stream and uh as a final send off at the very very end of the stream apropos of literally nothing, he decides to dish out personal dirt about his wife, Kat. She's in a really bad place in her life, an abusive relationship. She got out of that relationship, and once she did, then we started talking a little bit more romantically, and then things pursued. People made stuff up and said that I basically stole her from her ex and that he's a victim. It's funny, because when you look on the internet, they will find all this public information about me and my personal life they'll find my bankruptcy they'll find all these statements did you ever find the restraining order that she had against her ex because he was hitting her right but you know make him look like a good guy on the internet right which is what they've done my detractors have actually done this they've gone into her personal life with her family she has nothing to do with me or my content stop if you're going to mess with me that's one thing leave my family leave my, my everyone out of it Make fun of me. Put the brunt on me. It's one of my biggest regrets as a content creator. I never meant for anyone to get hurt doing this. Never. I feel awful that my wife every day is feeling awful about things going on. Like, why are they uh, saying these things about me? It literally makes my... It sound, that fake, like, crying voice he's doing. Oh, oh it sounds so rehearsed. Oh. About her. She has nothing to do with any of this. Leave her out of it, all right? Just all this stuff. I mean, I'm sure there's a million other things. There'll be a part two. We'll get to it then. But those are two things that have always been hor pretty sound, horrible to women. If anything, you will never, ever, one million percent, you it, will never find someone on the internet. It does literally remind me of, um, of Chris Chan, where, where he's apologizing to Julie. And he's going, I never meant to hurt anybody. Ooh, ooh. It's really crazy. Awesome, awesome, awesome still that I got here. Saying that Phil was in a sex scandal. Phil was abusive to women in the past. I have never done that in my life. One million okay. percent. I, you know, and it, but they want to say it, and it really irks me the wrong way. So, and then they have they have right. literally no follow up to that because it, it was completely apropos of nothing, and they're they're left stunned in silence. That's it. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CAC of Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.